This is the MAT 125 video number 12, a discussion on set theory, logic, and Boolean algebra. In this video, we'll look at blood types as an example to illustrate subsets and the Venn diagram. We'll see connections between logic and set theory, which is an introduction to Boolean algebra. Example, there are three different antigens, A, B, and RH, that occur in human blood and determine the blood type. A person may have some, all, or none of these antigens in their blood. If neither A nor B are present, the blood type is called O. And if RH is present, the blood type is positive, and otherwise it's negative. We could illustrate the fact that there are eight different blood types actually using a truth table. Let's make columns for each of the different antigens. So we'll start start with a column for A, a column for B, and a column for RH, and then we'll write down what the type is. So just like we were doing truth tables, we could list all the possibilities here. And I'll say, first of all, you can say that it has to be 8, because there are two possibilities. With A, you can have it or not. With B, you can have B antigen or not. And with the RH, you could have that or not. So you have 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8 possibilities total. And we could list them all out. We could go with true on both of these. That is, you have both of those antigens. Or you could have A, but not B. You could have no A. You could have B. Or you could have neither of these two antigens. And that would be the truth table with two variables. But of course, we have three variables here. We have the RH as a third variable, which you may or may not have that. So what I would do here is to say that if you recognize that there are four cases with just two variables, once we add in a third variable, we have eight cases, because we're going to double the number of cases. You see, all of these blood types could include the RH or not. So then we'll just do the same four again with the RH false. We'll go true, 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 false, false, true, both false. So that's repeating the same four cases that I just had above, but now on the third variable we can make this false, and in this way we end up with eight different possibilities. Now what are these blood types called? If you have all three antigens, that's the blood type AB positive. If you have A, but no B, but you have RH antigen, that's A positive. If you have no A, but you have B and RH, that's B positive. The blood type here doesn't have A or B, but has only the RH antigen. And so because it doesn't, it lacks both the A and the B, it's called O, and this would be O positive. The blood type here has both A and B, but no RH. So that is the AB negative. This is A only. No B, no RH, so it's A negative. This will be B negative, because we have only the B antigen. All of these are going to be negative, because there's no RH. So finally, at the end, there's no A, no B, no RH. This type is O negative. Let's draw a picture of a Venn diagram to show the eight regions of the Venn diagram when there are three sets. So we could label these A, B, and RH. And then in each of these different regions, we could identify what blood type it is. So let's start out here. This is only A, no B, and no RH. This blood type is A negative. This guy right here is A and B, but no RH. This is A, B negative. The blood type that this region corresponds to is B negative. This region right here, there's the presence of A and B and RH, all three antigens. So it's a region that is in all three sets. So um, you could say that we're 
in the case of true on all three of those variables, if you're in all three of those sets. And so this is the AB positive. Here is A and RH, so this is A positive. This would be B positive. B is present, RH, but no A. This is no A in B, but the RH is positive, so there's O positive. And out here is when none of the, uh, you're in none of those sets, so that's when you're false on all three of those variables. That's the O negative. Okay, so let's talk about subsets uh, a little bit. This is a notation for a subset. We would say A is a subset of B, if and only if, for every X. If X is an element of A, then X is a, an element of B. That is, A is completely contained within B. Everything in A is in B. This is the notation for A is not a subset of B, and that would be if and only if there exists some X such that X is in A and it isn't in B. And then finally, to indicate that A is a proper subset, we would have to confirm that A was a subset and there is at least one element in B that is not in A. This is the notation for A is a proper subset of B. Actually, we could write A is a proper subset of B if and only if A is a subset of B and A and B are not equal. So this A is a proper subset of B if and only if A is a subset of B and the sets are different, not equal. Okay, let's look at some examples of subsets in this, um, within the example of the blood types. So it's the nature of donating blood that to donate blood, the donor's set of antigens must be a subset of the recipient's antigens. Otherwise, if you get blood that has antigens that you don't naturally have in your own blood, you would get sick. So you want to make sure that the antigens that you get are a subset of the antigens you already have. Every antigen that you're getting is in the set of antigens that you already have. So for example, if we said B positive is the set that's B and RH, those antigens are present in the B positive blood type. And if we look at AB positive, that has A and B and the RH antigen. And so you could say that B positive is a subset of AB positive because every element of B positive is in the set of uh, AB positive. Every element here is contained in this set. You can look at this as contained or equal. As another example, B positive is not a subset of O positive because this set contains antigens that are not in that set. B positive is B and RH which is not a subset of O positive, which is only the RH antigen. It's true the other way around. RH, the set that contains RH, the set of antigens, including RH, is a subset of B and RH, but not this way. So that has a line through it. We could say O negative can donate to O positive because O negative, which is actually the empty set, is a subset of O positive. Basically the set of antigens here, every element of this set is an element of that set. Um, that is vacuously true. It's true because if we said if there was an element here it would be there, that is actually not false and therefore it's true. What this also means is that this empty set is a subset of every set. O negative can actually donate to anyone. O negative is the universal donor.
AB positive is the universal recipient, AB positive can receive any other blood type because it has all the antigens and every set of antigens would be a subset of the set for AB positive. So AB positive is the universal recipient, AB positive can receive blood from anyone and that's because every blood type has a set of antigens that is a subset of AB positive, including AB positive. So we could start making some really curious, interesting little connections between set theory and logic back and forth, finding analogs between the two, and that will lead us toward the idea of Boolean algebra. Let's start with this idea of subsets. In logic, if we said if P then Q, we can now visualize that in set theory as P is a subset of Q. That is, if you're in the set P, then you're in the set Q. That is, P is a subset of the set Q. The set P is a subset of the set Q. Let's say the only time that that statement is false is when an element is in the set P and not in Q, which is exactly when this conditional is false. I'll even extend that uh, analogy to the conditional by using the arrow and say this notation, B positive donates to AB positive is okay. B positive can donate to AB positive because every element in the set of antigens of B positive is in the set of antigens of AB positive. So that statement is, is true. If this is true, this will be true. However, turning it around, you see it's not true. AB positive donates to B positive. AB positive is not a subset of B positive. AB positive being this set of antigens A, B. There's a way that this could be true, that you could be in the set that contains uh, A, B, and RH. That is, you could look at the antigen A, B in this set, and not in that set. So you could be sort of true here and false there and get that false. And that's all because there is this one element A that is in the set ABRH, but it's not in this set. Let's move to some definitions. Let A and B be subsets of a universal set U. The universal set is the set of all elements that are involved in a particular example or problem at hand. Number one, the union of A and B, denoted this way, is the set of all elements that are, are in at least one of the sets A or B. So that is in A or B or in both. The intersection of A and B, denoted this way, is the set of all elements that are common to both A and B elements that are in A and also in B. The difference of B minus A, that is the difference of the two sets, or the set B minus A, also called the relative complement of A in B, denoted like a subtraction of the sets, is the set of all elements that are in B and not in A. And the complement of A, denoted this way with this little superscript C, is the set of all elements that uh, are in the universal set that are not in A. Symbolically, the union is all elements of the universal set that are in A or B. Intersection is all elements in both A and B. The set B minus A is all elements in B that are also not in A. And the complement is all the elements of the universal set that are not in A. Sometimes a complement, I write it with a little apostrophe. Sometimes in uh, some of the notes that I have, you might, I might use this notation for the complement. So we can visualize the union as every element that is in A or B, if you have two sets, A and B, looks like this. This would be the intersection, the elements in common. This would be B if you remove A. So it's B, all the elements of B with the intersection of a and B removed. And this would be the complement of A, all the elements outside of the set A. 
And just to compare, if you did A minus B, it would be all elements of B with the intersection of A and B removed. So consider the following example. Compare the sets A intersect B union C and A intersect B union C. Are these sets always equal? You can analyze this with a Venn diagram. We're checking this equation. And right now it's a question. Call this the left-hand side. Call this the right-hand side. And on the left-hand side, I'll use a Venn diagram again to, to decide whether these are equal. Because it's only three sets, so it's not that hard to draw all the different ways in which the three sets can relate to each other. If I number those different regions, I begin again with set A as 1, 2, 4, and 5. A intersect B, 2, 4, and 5. So set C is 4, 5, 6, and 7. A intersect B, union C. Well, that's everything in A intersect B plus all the elements of C, or all the regions in which C. See, all the elements of C would be in those regions. So we're just identifying what regions to analyze this in the most general sense. So union of these regions is 2, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Okay, now looking at the right hand side, A intersect B union C. A is still 1, 2, 4, and 5, but I want B union C. So the elements in the set B union C would be all the elements that are in the regions for B for B and C. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So A intersected with B union C is what's in common in both of these two, which is 2 is in both. The 4 is in both, and the 5 is in both. So this is the right-hand side, this is the left-hand side, and they're not equal. So we see this left-hand side, 2, 4, 5, 6, and 7, those regions, for this left-hand side, 2, 4, 5, 6, 7. It's not the same as this right-hand side, which is regions 2, 4, and 5. So we conclude this left-hand side, A intersect B union C, A intersect B all union C, that's not the same as A intersected with B union C. It's because of those parentheses. That changes the result. The sets aren't equal. Not always. Actually, they could sometimes be equal. If the region 6 and 7 were empty, then the elements in those regions 2, 4, and 5 would be the same here on this uh, combination of intersections and unions as it would be here because they would correspond to the same elements. That would be a special case. We say that these are not equal always. Now, to finish this off, I want to make the analog in logic for this comparison. Everywhere that I have an intersection and, because it implies it has to be in both A and B, for example, I'm going to use and in logic. And whenever there's a union, I'll switch that to an or in logic. And so I'm going to compare this statement, P and Q, or R, with P and Q or R. You see, I'm just turning set A into statement P, intersection into an AND, set B becomes the set Q, the union becomes the OR, C, the set, becomes the statement R. So I'm translating or creating a sort of uh, analog or analogous statement 
in logic for this statement in set theory. In comparing those two statements, as I compared those two sets, we'll discover they're not equal also. And we can approach that with the truth table. So what I've done is I've gone through and listed all eight of the possibilities when there are three variables. You see I've got, with just two variables, these first four cases all with R true, and then the next four cases here, true, 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 false, false, true, false, false, with the R false. Then I've gone through and done the AND on P and Q. Then I figured out P and Q or R following the rules for OR. I figured out that it's in these cases, one through five, where this statement is true. Now if, if I do Q or R, get that truth value, then I can finish off looking at P and Q or R and get its truth value. And it's these cases where it's true for this statement. And so because they differ there in case three and four, these two statements are not logically equivalent. And now I can actually visualize, as I did with the Venn diagram, how these statements differ visually. What I'll do is, just like I had done with um, the sets A, B, and C, I'll create sets P, Q, and R. And uh, I'm going to label the regions in a different order. What I'm actually labeling now is in exactly the same order that I have labeled it here. So region 1, region 1 is here, where P, Q, and R are all true. So I just labeled that right there. When you're in set P, in set Q, and also in R. So I'll make it true if you're in the set, and false if you're not. So for example, we could look at 2 as being in P, but not Q, but in R. So in R, in P and R, but not Q. So this is in P and R, and not Q. Region 3 is when it's you're in the set Q and in the set R, but not in P. Or that is, when Q is true, R is true, and P is false. That's three. Right there. Q and R are true, P is false. This set four, I mean this, this case four, is when R only is true. So that would be there. Not in set P, not in set Q, so P is false, Q is false, only R is true. So that's how the, the regions are labeled according to the cases in the truth table. And you could just simply identify that these regions that I've shaded are regions where you are in P and Q or you're in set R. Either you have to have both P and Q true or you have R true. So. P and Q true would represent these regions 1 and 5. But when you include or R is true, you get 2 and 3 and 4 added on. So it's these regions 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, where this statement came out being true. But over here, this is P and Q or R. So P has to be true, and then either Q or R. So if P is true, you have to be in that set P and at the same time in Q or R, so it's any of these three regions, one, two, and five, because P must be true. You have to be in the set P, so the statement P is true, and then, and then either in Q or R, so either five or two or one. Clearly, these are not the same regions. It's only regions one, two, and five, one, two, and five, where this statement is true, and it's because regions three and four, in this statement it's true, and in this statement they're false. Three and four, it was true here, false there. That's why these two, uh, you could see it sort of like both logically and in set theory, why these two statements are different. All right, so after that very thorough analysis of the difference between those two statements logically, I think what I'll finish off with is a, a, an example 
of how those statements might sound in English. Let's say at the restaurant the waiter says dinner includes soup and salad or dessert and the customer responds is that dinner includes soup and salad comma or dessert or do you mean dinner includes soup comma and salad or dessert so let's take the statement P to be dinner includes soup that's a statement that could be true or false Q is the statement dinner includes salad R is the statement dinner includes dessert and this statement here dinner includes soup and salad with the comma after that I interpret that to mean P and Q or R because the comma suggests that these are um, we have a conjunction of these two statements and then separately we have or dessert so P and Q as one statement or R Whereas this, we, we interpret this to say uh, P and salad or dessert. So we put parentheses here. We have that statement. So we can look at whether P, Q, and R are true or false. And here I'm shading regions in the Venn diagram. This is P. This is Q, set P or statement P, this is Q, and this is R. So if we have soup and salad or dessert, we have all of these different possibilities, all these different places where we could say the statement is true, the entire statement is true in any of these regions. But this statement, with this P, Q, are, this statement would be true only in these regions. It's like saying this, this statement means that you'll have soup and salad or you'll have dessert. This is saying you're going to have the soup and either salad or dessert. So you, you see these two statements, they are logically different. This statement could be interpreted to be true or false in at different times depending on how we group the and and the or whether we group soup and salad together or the salad or dessert together how we interpret where is the grouping so if it was written the comma could indicate how the grouping is intended but if it's just said in uh, without much emphasis or pause it could be misinterpreted as to precisely logically what was what was intended. Each of these statements is P and Q or R, but they are not really logically the same. There are circumstances where one could be true and the other one false. Just by the placement of that comma or the placement of the parentheses. So let's just finish off by briefly beginning the discussion of Boolean algebra. Boolean algebra recognizes the principles of set theory and logic as being analogous. And when we abstract and generalize these principles, we're studying the principles of Boolean algebra. You notice that properties in logic are reflected by properties in set theory and vice versa. This says P or not P is a tautology always true and that tautology that's always true has a analogous uh, component in set theory which is the universal set and this is a contradiction P and not P is always a contradiction always always false and A intersected with A complement is always the empty set in logic, you could say the negation of the negation of P is back to P, and the complement of A complement, it's back to the set A. These are properties of logic that are similar in set theory. This is the De Morgan's laws of set of logic, and here are De Morgan's laws in set theory. Well, starting into the whole story of what Boolean algebra 
really is thoroughly. It's going to take a while, and this video is running on a bit now, so I think I'll, I'll just stop here. Uh, I hope this has been helpful.